Hey everybody, I'm Ryan, this is Perfect Circuit, and today we're taking a look at Make Noise's newest Eurorack module, Spectrophone. Now, Spectrophone is a super deep module, deeper than I can cover in this video alone. So if you're curious to learn more, head to our blog, Signal. Uh, I've written a more in-depth article that goes into some of the deeper details. So anyway, in this video, we're going to take a look at how Spectrophone works on a high level, and we're going to hear lots of sounds. So let's dive in. Spectrophone is a dual oscillator module developed in collaboration with Tom Erb of SoundHack. You can think of it as being similar to a complex oscillator with its own unique method of wave shaping, which, unlike most complex oscillators, doesn't rely on wave folding. Like prior Make Noise SoundHack collabs, it presents a unique take on digital synthesis methods that otherwise are pretty rare in the world of music hardware. In this case, Spectrophone tackles additive synthesis and resynthesis. These techniques are notoriously complex because of the sheer number of variables required to use them. An additive voice, for instance, might use dozens or hundreds of oscillators with independently controlled pitch and amplitude in order to construct a more complex tone. Spectrophone sidesteps these complexities by focusing on resynthesis adjacent techniques. Now, I'm not going to blab on about how resynthesis works because you're probably here to see and hear Spectrophone specifically, but suffice to say that resynthesis is a technique that revolves around analyzing the overtone structure of a sound and then using that analysis, an analysis of the tuning and loudness of the sound's harmonic structure, to control a digital synthesis engine. Even resynthesis is an abstract process with no predefined set of logical variables. And because of that, and because of the computational power required to execute it, it's super rare to see resynthesis based hardware. So, with those thoughts out of the way, let's take a closer look at Spectrophone itself. Spectrophone is a dual oscillator module with a panel layout similar to the typical complex oscillator. It's comprised of two oscillators, each with multiple outputs along the top and CV inputs along the bottom. Each oscillator has a sine wave output, an assignable sub CV output, and outputs for that oscillator's odd and even harmonics. There's also an audio CV input here, which we'll talk more about later. Each oscillator gives you direct control over its frequency, you have volt per octave inputs, and a variety of voltage controllable parameters for continuously altering the timbre of the sound. There's also a dynamic voltage controllable FM bus in the middle, which allows you to internally frequency modulate the two oscillators with one another. So you can totally use Spectrophone similarly to how you'd use the typical complex oscillator.
part isn't so mysterious, right? It's super similar in layout or concept to other modules you're probably already familiar with. But the most interesting aspects of Spectrophone are about how it handles the creation of timbre. You can think of Spectrophone as an oscillator whose timbre is driven by external sound sources. And in fact, there are two modes of operation uh, selectable via these buttons. There's spectral amplitude modulation, which I'll refer to going forward as SAM mode, and spectral array oscillation, which I'll refer to as SAO mode. In SAM mode, the oscillators continuously track the timbre of an incoming sound and remap it onto the oscillator's own overtone structure. You have the ability to create and internally store arrays of spectral information during this process for use in SAO mode. So we'll listen to examples of all this as we go, but for now, the important thing to note is that in SAM mode, Spectrophone analyzes external audio in real time and acts somewhat like a vocoder-like processor. And in SAO mode, it acts more like a conventional oscillator with the ability to resynthesize previously analyzed sounds. So all that in mind, let's take a look and listen to each of these modes in greater detail and point out how they work along the way. <laughs> So first, let's look at SAM mode. In this mode, you can send external audio into the inputs at the top of the module and use external audio sources to drive the oscillator's timbre. Let's listen quickly to my voice running into Spectrophone for an idea of what this can be like. This is Spectrophone in SAM mode. This is the sound of spectral amplitude modulation. This is the effect of spectral amplitude modulation. So the effect here is really similar to a vocoder. The pitch of the oscillator is always determined by the frequency knob and volt per octave input. So Spectrophone doesn't attempt to pitch track my voice or anything. Instead, it maps my voice's overtone structure onto the oscillator's own overtones using the slide control to establish a sort of formant offset between my voice and the oscillator. So if I slide it around, it's more like this. This is the sound of slide and spectral amplitude modulation. The sound of using slide in spectral amplitude modulation. The focus control causes a sort of lag in a way between the input and the output and can result in some evolving ringing sorts of tones. <laughs> And importantly, the partials control affects the presence of odd and even partials at these two outputs. Sweeping partials has a sound somewhat like a filtering-like effect, and you can use it to determine the overall brightness of the sound in both SAM and SAO modes. When partials is at its minimum value, these outputs are silent, so you can use it similarly to how you might use a low-pass gate using envelopes to impart articulation on the sound. So one of the really cool aspects of this is that you also have the ability to use the FM bus to frequency modulate uh, the sound that you're instantaneously resynthesizing, which can sound absolutely crazy. Here I'm gradually introducing frequency modulation. <laughs> intense frequency modulation. Of course, this all works with more than just voice.
Okay, so let's say you've got a sound you're really digging and you want to be able to use it as the basis for the oscillator sound without having to constantly pipe it into the oscillator's input. At any given moment, you can hold the shift button for a side and then press the array button in order to create an array of spectra based on the incoming sound. When doing this, over the course of around a second, you capture just over a thousand sort of snapshots of the incoming audio's spectral structure. Now, this isn't an audio recording. It's basically just a set of instructions for how you want the oscillator's overtone structure to work. So, for instance, I could create an array based on the sound of my voice. I'm creating an array. Once you've created the array, you can switch to SAO mode and use it to define the sound of the oscillator. In this mode, the slide and focus controls change in function. They act sort of like coarse and fine control for scrubbing through the array. So if you listen, you'll notice that it still retains the general character of my voice. And you can use this to create oscillator sounds based on the spectral characteristics of any sound you like. Also worth noting, if you plug an external clock source into the clock input while creating an array, you can slow down the creation process, allowing you to create arrays corresponding to slower, more evolving kinds of sounds. You can store and recall up to 16 arrays for each side of the module. You switch which array you're using uh, by using a combination of the shift buttons to cycle through all positions for each side. Other fun things to note, in SAO mode, the input knob in Jack can be used to offset the frequency of the even partials up to one octave above their original frequencies. That input's DC coupled, so you can send CV or audio in to affect the even frequencies separately from the odd frequencies. Also worth noting, the sub outputs produce sub oscillator tones in this mode by default, uh, but you can also use the shift and CV buttons in order to switch so that it can produce stepped random voltages, smooth random voltages, or a triangle LFO. Um, and the rate of those modulations could be controlled using the shift button as a sort of tap tempo control. So Let's just take time to listen to some different types of sounds in SAO mode and just get a general sense of what the spectrophone can do. process one through the other. Right now I have side B in SAO mode and side A in SAM mode.
So that's it. We've covered most of Spectrophone's features, but honestly, we've barely scratched the surface of what it can do. It's a super powerful and inspiring module, and I'm personally excited to keep digging in. If you want to learn more about Spectrophone, remember to check out our blog, Signal. I've written an article that goes even deeper into how it works and what it can do. And of course, if you want to get a Spectrophone of your own, head to the Perfect Circuit website. There are links to the article and to the Spectrophone product page itself, right down in the description of this video. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, give us a like, subscribe, and yeah, do you have any questions? Any ideas about how you'd want to use Spectrophone in your own music? Let us know down in the comments, I'd be happy to hear what you're thinking. Anyway, that's it for now, happy patching, and I'll catch you later.